Where does Plasticon shop for his toys? At BigBadToyStore.com. Just go check them out. They got Transformers, DC, Marvel, you name it. They got all different kinds of toys there. <laughs> Even including me. <laughs> Micromaster City is under attack again by Megatron and his minions. Who saves the day? The Protectobots. These little guys will help anybody out who needs rescuing. These five little rescue vehicles will form into Defensor. I, Defensor, will save the day. Protect the bots, brought to you by Hasbro. Some assembly required. Oh my god, Plastic Arm broke out the crayons again. <laughs> Welcome back to another Plasticon review. Today, we're going to cover something really, really obscure. And by the way, congratulations to anybody who got some pretty cool bots this year. Anyhow, I want to cover something that a lot of you guys have probably never seen before. What I'm talking about is a Generation 2 release. The bottom I'm actually going to cover is something I actually customized based on a release that should have happened during Generation 2 Transformers. Most of you guys have never seen it, and it's a G2 Defensor. Hasbro um, was going to release these things. It got as far as a um, packaging, but it never actually made it to the store shelves. The only thing I've never seen the package of was the hotspot but there are prototypes out there that a lot of cameras have gotten eye of a while back it was on TFW 2005 if any of you guys follow that and as well as TF wiki actually has it so if you look up defense or you scroll all the way to the very bottom you're gonna see this very very weird colored defense or down there well that was gonna be G2 defense or. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and cover the repaint that I did of it because I'm a big G2 fan and show you guys something just a little bit weird and obscure. Anyhow, let's go ahead and start reviewing the bots themselves. Here are the Protecta bots in their G2 colors. Yes, I know, very garish. Very, very odd. Very, very weird. Yeah, he looks like Inferno. He doesn't. If when you start actually looking at him, he does not look anything like Inferno in this mode. To let you guys know, this is a KO I repainted. It's a test bed that I was doing because I plan on actually getting hold of the real Protectobots and actually using high quality paint at that point and repaint it to make it look like an actual G2 Defensor. There would have been Gold Plastic Syndrome on this guy as well if they would have released him. I will get onto that as soon as I end up going into the actual bot review itself. But anyhow, let's go ahead and continue on with that. So, let's cover um, probably the weakest one out of all of them, and that would be Blades. Here's Blades. Yes, I know. No decals. Well, I did put a G2 logo right there, right on the front. Because honestly, this guy had really no decal apps. It was really, really odd. Does spin just fine. And it being a KO, this back one just kind of just slides on. It doesn't really spin. That's the only bad thing about this thing, but this is the color it would have been. It would have had white windows, blue paint, orange wheels, orange blades. Not a bad color scheme, if you ask me, especially for a rescue helicopter. It kind of makes sense. But it is G2. It's going to have the really weird colors. 
this orange might have been a little bit brighter on the actual one, but I was going off by the actual pictures that they had, so have to bear with me on that. I just like doing that, sorry. It's a helicopter, I do that every time. Anyhow, this guy has a simple transformation. You pull this portion here out. It's going to be very stiff on this because I actually painted it. And then flip this back portion like this. Sand him up. Flip this back. Then you will take these and slide them right out. Do the same here. Alright. Now if you notice, it's very, very hard to tell, but the blue is actually a lighter blue here. Let you guys get a good look at the head sculpt. If I can get it to focus. Same head sculpt, wouldn't have been any different. Like I said, the uh, chest portion here would have been like a lighter blue. But that's the reason why he's kind of like the weakest link, because they actually had a dark blue with a light blue, plus some orange. That was it. That was the only major change on this guy. I've seen these guys actually in the packaging and everything, and this is exactly what they would have looked like if they would have released these during Generation 2. But anyhow, let's continue on with the next one. And there's Blades in G2 format. Get him to stand up if he wants to stand up. There you go. Let's go ahead and cover Streetwise. Here's Streetwise. This is one of my favorite out of the group. Because he would have just been a straight up black police car. Sorry, that was blades hitting the ground because he's very silly at times. <clears throat> but anyhow, he would have had the same thing except for G2 logo. I can get the focus on it. G2 logo and G2 logo. Light bar was two different colors on it. The original was only one color they had two different colors on the actual light bar. It would have been black like this with a little bit of silver on the front. This probably from the pay, from the actual looking at it, it wouldn't have been an actual chrome because during G2 they really didn't use much chrome. They did, but they didn't. But that's something that would have probably been painted just silver. It might have been laced with, with chrome right here, but it, it really didn't look like it from the pictures. But anyhow, it would have just been a black police car. I'm going to go ahead and transform them real quick. Lift this up. And then flip this portion here in the back down. This portion here on the back, even on my actual G1 version of this guy, does this sometimes. Sometimes it gets caught. Right there. And I really have yet to figure out why they would have designed that to do that other than to hold it. It's very, very, very finicky. Slide his little hands here out. And this is where you're going to see probably the only big difference between this and the actual G1 on this knockoff. The only difference on this bot here itself would be the chest portion doesn't flip off. If it did, it would allow this to kind of close in a little better. But the head sculpt. Once you get a good look at this, I can get it to focus on it. It doesn't want to focus on it at all. Focus on this. But anyhow, you guys get the idea. He would have been a black police car. It would have been totally red like this all the way through everything. Identical. 
that's the real, really, really weird thing about the Protectobots. They really didn't do anything with the actual design of them, just the colors. Anyhow, let's move on to First Aid. Here's First Aid. Now, first off, when I looked up the actual thing, there were emblems they actually had for the back portion here that would cover the back windows on this guy. And also a series of numbers that went across the top. I did put the G2 emblem there right on the top. Got kind of caught by the way these repro labels are. It'd probably tear real easy to try to take it off. These things stick really good. Which is good because they're not going to ever fall off. Don't have to worry about that. But the light bar would have been two different shades of color. And obviously you can tell this is gold back here. If you would have had this guy during G2, you would have been like, oh, God, I've got this guy to deal with this gold. Yes. You would have had to deal with pulling this out, praying to God it isn't going to shatter because gold plastic syndrome, and then flip this whole thing out and hope to God that doesn't break when you're trying to transform the legs. Now, like I said, this is a knockoff, so it does have one thing it does not do compared to the actual one. And that's the whole gimmick where the head moves forward. That's the only difference between this and the original. But, you would have noticed, even the actual head portion would have been gold. So, in a way, I'm kind of thankful that Hasbro didn't go this route and actually release these guys like that because this would have been another one to chop up and put on the chopping block kind of like slingshot from Superion just shattering. It's sad that the gold plastic just didn't hold up back then but it would be pretty awesome to see Hasbro go back and just decide to do a commemorative reissue of this guy or actual issue of this guy in G2 colors in an actual um, gift set. Would have been really, really cool. But, as you guys know, as you guys see the head sculpt, it's not bad. I know it's not the best in the world. I apologize if my paint job kind of offends people. But you know what? I spent about three days painting this guy with what I had because I didn't want to have to go out and buy a bunch of paint in order to actually do this thing the way I wanted to. But after doing this right here, I learned a lot about the actual disassembly of these guys. So when I get around to actually doing the real G2 or the actual G1, then it'll end up happening. But that's usually, that's going to be sometime in the future. Anyhow, there you go. There's first aid. And it's G2 colors. Now let's move on to another guy. Groove. There's Groove. And this garish orange bike. If anybody's a Harley fan, they're probably gushing right now because this guy's orange. Yes, this is the color he would have been. This was awesome. As you notice, it's a very light blue. The went around. Which is another reason why I like him. Now I'm going to go into the simple fact that this guy was not the weakest link. Honestly, it wouldn't have been. Because this guy had zero gold plastic problems. Would have had zero. That's what was great about him. Anyhow, head sculpt would have been the same. I'm going to flip this up. Flip up his head. And then I'm going to take his little seat. Put it down. And move it here. Now, if I had the actual real one, this actually splits in half. Would have been the same transformation. And then I'm going to move these little arms up. And there you go. There is Groove in his robot mode. Obviously, you can tell he would have had a very, very silver chest versus a gold chest. He would have had several differences compared to the actual G1 Defensor. But... It would have been very, 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 very awesome to have. That's like I said, the only pictures I've seen of this entire set was a prototype. And the prototypes were sealed inside boxes. And it looked like the guy that actually had the prototype took pictures, stuck them on the internet, and probably has them in a vault somewhere because those things would be 
pretty much priceless. And yeah, I'm talking about a toy being priceless. When it comes to prototypes, especially things they designed and never released, it would have been one of those things that actually lasted. It was a lot, guys. Anyhow, let's move on to Hotspot. Here's Hotspot. In his G2 glory, yes, red truck. Orange, 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 orange. Lots of orange. A lot of those colors would have gotten replaced with orange. Even the front would have had orange. Really weird, huh? I thought it was actually an awesome idea. Personally, this thing is just... I think this is actually better than the real hotspot because I actually like the colors. I love... The colors they actually did on this entire defense or it really looks good together he would have had like the same articulated ladder this ko actually has an articulate ladder just like it Let's move that way up. Like so very 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 long ladder Also has rotation. Let's push this thing back down. I have compared this to um, to Inferno. This ladder is actually longer than Inferno's, and I even compared Hot Spots. Hot Spots. This Ko is slightly bigger, just slightly, not by a lot, just just a tad bigger. That's what's kind of crazy about this guy. I mean, he's not one of those ones that would have... I mean, th this KO was actually very, very good. It's not bad. Yes, I'm talking about a knockoff, but I also painted it up to look like the G2 version. If you guys happen to ever want the actual G1 version to be repainted into G2, this is a good reference guide for you guys. But, like I said, eventually that's what I'm going to end up doing. But anyhow, it is in this fire truck mode. So let's turn him into his robot. First things first, obviously you gotta move this thing and get this thing out of the way. It's obviously it flops everywhere. Oh yeah, one thing I wanted to show you, ginormous G2 logo right there on the top, because that's exactly what it would have had right there. That was awesome. Split this thing in half. Move these to the side. Then, I'm going to take this portion here, bring it up, swing it around, bring it on the back just like so. Then, grab this, pull it out, grab this, pull it out. Reach in here, flip up the head. Then, I will push down on these little levers here on the side. Bring down the fists. There you go. Hot spot in robot mode. Oh. Last but definitely not least. Move that up. There he is. Yes, he would have had the big blazing light blue chest. The crazy thing about this thing, this actually reflected every color but gold from the entire team, which I think that's awesome because it really, really shows how uniform this entire set really was compared to the G1. Yes, I'm talking about the G1. The G1 only had blue on Hotspot, and that's it. There wasn't blue on anything else. And I think they could have spread, you know, colors out a little bit and would have made the set a little better. But then again, they were trying to be more robots in disguise accurate. This is like... I don't care if I'm a robot or not. This is who I am. Anyhow, let's get, get a good look at the uh, head sculpt we have here. If I can ever get it to focus on it. Yeah. Not bad. He does have red eyes in there, if you can't tell. His eyes are red. 
I did do the research, that's what color their eyes would have been was red, which I think is like, I think you could have splashed maybe some gold or maybe yellow something in there to break it up, but no. Orange head, red eyes. But anyhow, that's exactly what the prototype looked like. Identical. Now, to transform him into Defense War. Let's do that real quick. Jet formation! Jet transformation! Transformers! The aerial bots are taking their shots! Some of both plastic combaticons! They can all change to be rearranged! To form a super robot superior! But the Baticons are warring! Our son is roaring! Here's one metamorph in Duricus! They all combine and kick superiors behind! Generation 2 aerial bots and Combaticons, each sold separately. Welcome back to another Plasticon review. Today we are going to be doing a contest. I got another contest for you guys. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, 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 and you. I'm talking to you guys, every one of you. Wherever you're at. Guess what? Still have more. Like I said, for every 50 subscribers, I'm giving these out. It's the holidays, and we have more to give. Guess what? I got now. Like I said, for every 50 subscribers, I'm giving out one of these. But I am also going to be throwing in another winner. The runner-up gets one of these. Yes. Lego Series 5. Mini pigs! Blind packs. You guys will love these things. Anyhow, it's gonna give you guys a look at what characters are involved with this, just in case you guys missed out on these being on the shelves or never could find them. Or eBay's got an inflated price. There you go. Got quite a few characters there. That's for you Lego freaks out there, because I know you guys want them. Everyone, yeah, you, 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 yeah, you, sitting in the corner, pouting. You want this in your stocking? Subscribe. Comment. Find me on Facebook, and also find me on Twitter. I'm going to be going through all the comments that are down below. And like I said, I use a random number generator, so I will do a random number generator for the first one, and the second one. So, like I said, check me out, you guys have a nice holiday, and enjoy you guys. Great, great feast you're going to end up having on Christmas Day. So. Take it easy. I will see you guys around. Peace out, guys. First things first, put this head down. Put this chest piece portion down. Bring these down and flip these into place. And push up the fists. Like so. Then, next thing you're going to do, you're kind of pull and tug and move these out, just like Minasaur. That's the only downfall of this thing, is the legs can be really, really finicky. Alright, we can get it. Get it. Yes. Then we're going to take this portion here on the back, rotate it around, flip this backward. And then flip out the head. Push this down just like so. And then, here we go. Let's get a good look at the head sculpt. Does not want to focus at all today.
There we go. It's exactly what it would look like. Orange head. Blue eyes. So I like the blue eyes. I think that was a good touch that actually breaks it up. Then, take the waist piece. And yes, the waist piece would have been blue. All the uh, add-on parts would have been casted in blue instead of black. But, put all this in. So, and take the chest piece. Yes, this being a KO, it's one big gigantic chest piece. I'll plug in here on the front. Then, what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start transforming these guys. Take first aid here, since his head does not flip forward, I have to make him a leg. Put this here. Put this here. Spin this back around. And then clamp it back down. Take the foot pad. Push it in. So that's it. One leg. Take the groove. And do the same thing with him. My groove here actually has the option. The only one that's lacking in this entire group is uh, first aid. That's the only bad thing about the, the KOs, but what do you expect? If this is a real one, I would have probably done the same configuration because this actually looks really good when it's all put together. Anyhow, two holes in the bottom. This is just in case any of you guys have never transformed a defense orb before. Slide that in, just like so. And take this one here, do the same thing. Like so. We got legs. It's getting pretty good sized. Now, what we'll do. You guys like to fall back, and even my G1 was always back heavy. It's like everything was like in a weird shape there. I don't know why. I was thinking they always could have like I don't know configured something a little different, but it'll bounce out when we put the arms on. Take him real quick. The blades. We'll leave this out and extended just like this. Fold his head forward. Take these two arm bits and put them back in. Flip this portion here up. I like to do that, and then I like to bring out the blades. Why? Well, why not? Who says you can't have blades spin real fast and become a shield? That's what I tend to use it for. I think it's kind of neat. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a fist. Plug it in this hole right here on the back. And since I've added paint to these, it has made quite a few of the joints pretty tight, which I don't mind. I actually kind of like the idea it's a little tighter. It holds together a lot better. And that's another thing just to let you guys know. I mean, some of you guys are, oh my god, knock off. Ugh. Those people that complain about that are the guys that can drop 150 to $200 on any bot and not even bat an eye. If you don't have the money, buy a knockoff. Who says you can't take a knockoff and paint it and make it look just like the G1? You can take that red hot spot that they have in that knockoff. You're do what I did. We're painted just like the G1. I mean, yeah, it's just not going to have the orange or the rubber wheels. It's not going to have a few things that work the way it should on the original, but come on. Honestly, for those people that can't afford it, let them be. Let them have their knockoffs. Because with a little bit of time, a little bit of money, 
like buying precision screwdrivers, maybe an X-Acto knife, a little bit of paint. You can make a knockoff look pretty good. I mean, this is, I want to say this is the third one I've shown you guys that I've done, but yeah, I know it's kind of weird because it looks like I'm venturing into the world of knockoffs after you guys seen that haul I had on on Facebook, but there's a few KOs out there I'm purchasing on purpose because I'm experimenting with a few things. But anyhow, I'm going to take Streetwise here. And basically what we're going to do is just flip him back over. I'm going to turn him back into a car basically is what you're going to do. And just a heads up for anybody that wants to do this kind of a thing, buy a Defensor um, Repro label kit, and then buy some G2 labels, and then do what I did. I just basically put the G1 stickers onto the, the entire bot itself, and then turn it back around and threw the G2 logo on it. There's nothing wrong with that. It works. It works just fine. Actually, to me, I like the G2 logo a little better anyway, but that's just me. I know blasphemy. Anyhow, after he's back in the car mode, you flip this peg here out in the middle. Stick this in here like that. Ooh. And he wants to fall over. And then arm on. And there we go. I'm going to pull this ladder down. And this is even a problem on the original. The uh, the balance on them has never really been the greatest. And that's why I kind of wish they would, you know, come out with a updated one. I'm not talking about a third party. I really want Hasbro to come back and start doing it. There you go. There's G2 Defensor in robot mode, combination mode, awesome mode. Oh my god, throw up colors. Okay, whatever you want to call it. Ah! <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> I just didn't have that plugged in all the way. <laughs> Size comparison time. <laughs> Peekaboo is prime. Pretty much in scale. Now if you want to see him next to a G1 character, well, let's see. Let's put him next to his original version. As you can see, knockoff's a little bigger. The only thing that's making this one larger is the hotspot is slightly scaled a little larger. But Honestly, not a big difference, honestly, at all. The only big difference is the color scheme. Most of you guys have seen the pictures I took and put on Facebook. Some of you guys see the ones where I was painting. Somebody mentioned something about, oh, you're using testers. Yeah, it's the only thing I've got on me besides Games Workshop, and Games Workshop tends to peel if you get it wet because it is water-based. Plus, it scratches easier, I think, than testers does, but... I've been using testers for years, so it's the best I can do at the moment until I decide to dump some money on some more paints. But anyhow, hope you guys liked this review and hope you guys enjoyed what I showed you, a little bit of piece of um, history that most of you guys have probably never heard of or even seen or even thought about. Anyhow, this has been Plasticon. This has been yet another crazy review. And this is me, signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>